Hi, I'm Minji. I'm a first year medical student at King's College London and today I'm going to be answering some questions um, from Charlie. But first, we're here to get my second dose of the COVID vaccine. Hi, I'm back and fully vaccinated and ready to talk a bit about my experience. Like I was saying earlier, I'm a first year medical student at King's College London and it has been a dream of mine to go to medical school for quite a while now, so being here is really special to me. I was quite set on studying medicine pretty early on. I was really lucky to have some fantastic science teachers growing up, so I was always very interested in biology and the human body, and so I decided quite early on in secondary school that I wanted to try and become a doctor. I spent a lot of time researching medicine. I participated in lots of medical camps around Hong Kong, and I did my first work experience when I was in year 11, and you know I was talking to university admissions officer as early as year 10. So looking into medical schools was something that I did quite actively very early on. I really wanted to spend a lot of time focusing on it and exploring if being a doctor would be the right career for me. In fact, in secondary school, a lot of my peers knew me as the girl who wanted to study medicine because it was such a clear goal that I had been pursuing for such a long time. Looking back, I realized that this was actually quite unique. I see so many students struggling to identify a passion. This is quite normal, but I also think that we put the wrong focus on things. A lot of us kind of wait for passions to fall into our laps. We wait for natural callings or inexplicable interests in things. For me, it might look like I had one of these natural callings to study medicine because it happened so early on, but in fact, that was not the case. My passion for medicine was a very conscious decision that I made actively. I decided that this was my thing and I was going to try really hard to become a doctor no matter what it took because that was what I wanted to do. This is what drove me to do so much research and explore all of my different options to the point where I had nearly exhausted my local resources. So as nice as it would be for a passion to appear out of thin air, I just want to say that sometimes it's equally as important to make a decision for yourself. You have to step in and make an informed decision and then use whatever resources you have around you to pursue that goal to the best of your ability. For me, the location of my studies was a big decision that I had to make. Hong Kong medical schools require you to speak Cantonese, um, logically, but I'm not fluent in Cantonese, so this wasn't really an option for me. After years of summer courses and work experience and talking to lots of different doctors and university admissions officers, I knew for sure that I wanted to do a direct entry to medicine, meaning that I wanted to go right into medical school instead of doing another undergraduate degree first. This ruled out most of Australia, it ruled out Canada, and it ruled out the US. So that left us with the UK. The UK actually has a very comprehensive medical program. UK medical degrees are quite globally recognized and the caliber of teaching is pretty much the same across the country, which makes it a really great option for studying medicine, especially as an overseas student. For me, the end goal was to be in a medical school. I would be happy, trained to become a doctor, wherever, which meant that I also looked at the Caribbean, the Czech Republic, um, I was looking at all sorts of places. There are lots of great schools all around the world, which is why it's so important to do your research and decide what would be best for you. I have just finished my first year of medical school. In fact, I'll be taking my exams in two weeks time. For all the students who are thinking about where they want to apply and what they want to apply for, maybe even for medicine, I want to talk a bit about what makes studying medicine different from some of the other courses. For some courses, it's as simple as just deciding what you want to study and where you want to study it and that's it. It's just sort of a degree and you just pick a school that you know, you'd like to go to. For medicine, I think a lot more has to go into that decision. Medicine is in some ways like a lifestyle. It's a long degree and there's a lot of content that you have to cover. You have to be really into the subject and you need to be ready to put aside a lot of hours for learning and revising, which means that you might not be able to do some of the things that other students get to. But more than that, medicine comes with a lot more responsibility. As a medical student training to become a doctor, you're expected to set a good example. You're obligated to be professional, 
follow and encourage healthcare guidance and be informed and stay on top of all of the things that you have to know. For me, that means foregoing a lot of things that my friends on other courses do. It can be as trivial as not getting holiday when everyone else is visiting home, but more seriously, it can have other implications. During COVID times, as a medical student, it was really important for me that I got vaccinated as soon as possible and encouraged other people to do the same. It means staying away from illicit drugs and being careful with what I say or post on social media. It means presenting myself in a way that I would want my doctor to present themselves in public. Of course, doctors are people too, and we shouldn't be expected to be perfect. But taking on this role does mean additional obligation and responsibility. So when it comes to thinking about whether you want to study medicine, you have to decide if this is important to you and if you want to pursue a career where you will have to uphold these values at all times. Now, when it comes to actual useful tips that you'll be able to apply directly into your university applications, I'm going to go over a few briefly, but I'll include um, different places that you can find more resources about them. Now, I'm going to talk specifically about studying medicine in the UK as an overseas student, so some of my advice will be quite specific and not as applicable to other subjects. The first thing is that a lot of medical schools in the UK do have an age limit. So if you turn 18 any time after August um, of the year that you enter university, there will be quite a few schools that you can't actually apply to at all. There are some lists online that go over all the different schools and their age requirements, so definitely have a look if you fall into this category. Second, overseas quotas. The UK has a rule where there is a set percentage allocated for overseas student per cohort. Usually, this is around 7.5%, but it can vary, so definitely uh, do your research and have a look at what the different schools say. The actual number will be different for different schools depending on the size of their medical cohort. So for Kings, it's around 28, but for other schools, it can be as low as 12 to 15. This means that it is extra important for overseas students to consider their applications very carefully because there is almost no such thing as a safety when it comes to medical schools because these quotas can be so small. Additionally, this means that medicine can be very, very competitive for overseas students in particular because there are so few spots to be given. Another important thing to note is that if your interviews are in person, they can be slightly different from the home students. Right now, during COVID times, this isn't as relevant, but if interviews resume in person, there may be certain differences that you would want to research. For example, with St. Andrews, they have an international student interview hub in Malaysia, and the interviews that are run here are replicated MMI that are slightly different from the ones that are run in Scotland for the home students. Again, more information about the different interview types and whether you'll have to fly to a hub or to the UK can be found on the school's websites. There are lots of really great resources that can be used to look at admission statistics and read about student experiences. Definitely have a look at some past freedom of information requests. These are essentially requests for information that you can send to a university and usually they'll reply with um, the table of statistics, so this might include the number of offers given, the number of interviews given, the percentage of students who make it after the interview. Often they will also list out the scores of admissions tests such as the UCAT and the BMAT. It's definitely really useful to have a look at these records, and they're quite readily available online, so definitely have a look. It can also be really helpful to have a look on some discussion forums because there are lots of threads that are specifically dedicated to university admission and what it's like being a medical student or, you know, also for other subjects. There are different threads for different subjects, so definitely have a look around. There's lots of really great information available on the internet, so definitely, definitely do your research. Have a look and apply to your schools knowledgeable and as well informed as possible. So just to sort of wrap it all up, I thought I'd talk a little bit about my experience um, with my first year in medical school. Obviously, my experiences will be a little bit different because I did enter during the pandemic and so I've been doing pretty much all online teaching. University comes with lots of surprises and when I think about the things that have stood out the most to me this year, a lot of them are things that are not even actually related to medicine. A lot of my happy memories are dominated by the people I was with 
many of whom are on other courses, you know, living in a student accommodation, I got to meet so many different people from so many different places studying such different things. Being in London has been a really special experience because it's such a vibrant city and it's so easy to just pop out and visit so many different places. There are historic sites, there's so much good food, lots and lots to see. Speaking of food, living alone um, in non-catered accommodation has meant that I have to cook. And it was sort of a running joke in my family that I don't cook and everyone was sort of questioning if I'd be able to survive on my own. But despite everything, I have actually really enjoyed cooking and one of the big surprises of university has been that I am actually quite a good cook. So you can follow my food Instagram if that's something that you would like to see. But ultimately, one of my biggest takeaways has been, yes, the course that you study is important. And that's such a big part of my university experience, obviously, studying medicine and learning all of this content. But in reality, some of the things that have the biggest impact on me are the other factors that you have to think about. Things like what city you're going to live in, what kind of student life there is, things as simple as the weather and where the nearest grocery store is and what kind of restaurants there are around the campus. These little things can shape your life just as much as what you're studying. University decisions can be really stressful and really tough and often they will come with sadness and some disappointment. But what's really important is that you make informed decisions that you're happy with and that you just go and have the best time that you can possibly have with what's around you and that is what is really going to define your university experience.